It's trivial to embed an empty MK map view into SwiftUI, but if you want to do anything useful with the map, you have to introduce a coordinator, a class that can act as the delegate for your map view, passing data to and from SwiftUI. Just like working with UI Image Picker Controller, this means creating a nested class that inherits an NS object, making it conform to whatever delegate protocol our view or view controller works with, and giving it a reference to the parent struct so it can pass data back up to SwiftUI. For map views, the protocol we care about is MK map view delegate, so we can start writing a coordinator class immediately, and this as a nested class inside map view. Class coordinator, colon NS object, and MK map view delegate. Var parent, map view. In it, underscore parent, map view. Self dot parent equals parent. With that class in place, our code will stop compiling because SwiftUI can see we have a coordinator class and wants to know how it should be created. Just as with a UI view controller representable protocol, that means adding a method called make coordinator that sends back a configured instance of our coordinator. This should be added to the map view struct and it will send itself to the coordinator so it can report back what's happening. So, add this method to map view now. func make coordinator returns coordinator coordinator self. We can now connect that to our MK map view by adding this line of code to the make UI view method. Map view dot delegate equals context dot coordinator. That completes our configuration, which means we can now start adding methods that make our coordinator respond to activity in the map view. Remember, our coordinator is the delegate of the map view, which means when something interesting happens, it gets notified. When the map moves, when it starts and finishes loading, when the user was located on a map, when a map pin was touched, and so on. MapKit automatically examines our coordinator class to see which one of those notifications we want to be told about. It does this using function signatures. If it finds a method with a precise name and parameter list, it will call that. To demonstrate this, we're going to add a method called mapViewDidChangeVisibleRegion that takes a single MK map view parameter. Yes, this method name is very long, but trust me, there are many long out there in UIKit. My personal favorite got deprecated way back in iOS 5 and was called Will Animate Second Half of Rotation from Interface Orientation. Yes, really. Anyway, add this method to the coordinator class now. func mapViewDidChangeVisibleRegion underscore map view, mk map view. Print map view dot center coordinate. That'll be called whenever the map view changes its visible region, which means when it moves, zooms, or rotates. All we've made it do is print the new center coordinate. So when you run the app back in a simulator, you should see lots of coordinates being printed in the Xcode output window. Map view coordinators are also responsible for providing more information when the map view needs it. For example, we can add annotations to a map which act as points of interest that we want users to interact with. This is model data, meaning that it's just a title and some coordinates as opposed to a visual representation of that data. And so, when the map view wants to render annotations, it'll ask the coordinator what should be shown. To demonstrate this, we're going to modify the make UI view method so we send in an annotation for the city of London, like this. Let annotation equals mk point annotation annotation dot title equals london annotation dot subtitle equals capital of england annotation dot coordinate equals cl location coordinate 2d latitude 51.5 longitude 0.13 then map view dot add annotation annotation mk point annotation is a class that conforms to the mk annotation protocol which is what MapKit uses to display annotations. You can create your own annotation types if you want, but MK point annotation is good enough here because it lets us provide a title, subtitle, and coordinate. If you're curious, the name CL Location Coordinate 2D starts with CL because it comes from another Apple framework called Core Location. Anyway, that adds an annotation to our map. And with no further work, you should be able to run the app again. Then scroll around until you find London. You should see a marker there that can be tapped to reveal our subtitle. If you want to customize the way that marker looks, we have to bring our coordinator back into play. The map view will look at our coordinator for a particular method called view4, and it'll be called if it exists. This can create a custom annotation view, 
But again, Apple gives us a neat alternative in the form of MK pin annotation view. Add this code to the coordinator class. Funk map view, underscore map view, MK map view. View four, annotation, MK annotation, returns optional MK annotation view. Let view equals MK pin annotation view, annotation, annotation, reuse identifier, nil. View dot can show callout equals true, and return view. As you can see, that method gets handed a map view and an annotation, and must return the correct view to use to display the annotation. In our code, we use that to create an instance of MK pin annotation view, passing it the annotation it should work with. We then set can show callout to true, so typing the pin shows information, then send it back. Before we finish up with maps for now, I want to briefly mention that reuse identifier property. Creating views is expensive, which is why SwiftUI has things like the identifiable protocol. If it can identify its views uniquely, then it can tell which ones have changed and which haven't, which means it minimizes the amount of work it has to do. Frameworks such as UIKit and MapKit have a simpler version of the same concept called reuse identifiers. These are strings that can be anything we want and allow the framework to keep a big array of views ready to be reused. We can ask for one with a specific ID, give me a pin with the identifier place mark, and get one back from the array ready to be used, which means we don't have to create it again. We specified nil as a reuse ID above, which means we don't want to reuse views. This is fine when you're just learning, and realistically at any time when you're only gonna have a handful of pins. But later on I'll be showing you the more efficient approach here, which means reusing views.